Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session on the power of system design whilst unveiling low level and high level design concepts. So uh, today we have two very special guests for this webinar. We have Shikhar Goyal sir with us today, uh, who's the CTO of Geeks for Geeks. And we have Arsh Goyal, uh, who is a content creator and a senior software engineer at Samsung. So let me just welcome them. Hi, sir. Uh, welcome to today's session. Hello, Arsh. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi, Arsh. Hi, Shikhar. All right. So, uh, Yes, for everyone, uh, as we all know that uh, whether we are building a high performance application or designing a cutting edge infrastructure, a well thought out system design, uh, it ensures efficiency, reliability uh, and maintainability as well. So uh, now that we all know how important system design is in today's time. So let us learn and understand uh, all about it uh, from the two industry experts. So let's get started and welcome Shikhar sir and Arsh. Uh, thank you so much, Suniti, for a uh, brief introduction. Uh, we, maybe we can start this conversation with a brief introduction of both of us, and then we can take forward this session for. So starting with Shikhar, maybe Shikhar, you can introduce yourself. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Shikhar Goel, CTO at Geeks Weeks, and I've been working here since uh, 2016, which is when we started it full time. And uh, that's how we've been, like, we've been growing footsteps before steps next way, looking at how things grow, how we can help out the students who are learning computer science and in, in any aspect of things, like if they are a fresher or they are working professional, like uh, Geeks to Geeks can be a part of it. So I've been mostly working on that and on that front, wherein the technical aspects of things and how we design systems and how we build the applications. That's how, that's what most of our work has been around. Great, great. So as we all know that uh, Geeks for Geeks is a resource that everyone of us might have used at some point of, uh, time maybe surfing through those data structures about some problems or uh, learning about any new topic be it uh, computer science fundamentals like OS, DBMS, everything we can get on Geeks for Geeks and the person behind that who has built that tech who is leading the team behind how that is running so we have with uh, us today we'll be discussing we'll be taking this forward and discussing about uh, low level design system design a brief introduction about myself i am arsh girl i create content on youtube uh, linkedin instagram that helps engineering students uh, ace through their interview rounds help them get into those big dream tech companies and i, I work for uh, samsung as a software engineer so Today we are here, we'll discuss uh, about system design as it is one of the topics that has been asked by multiple companies in their interview rounds. What is the importance of system design from the point of view of uh, how you can uh, prosper in a company once you enter into a company? Like what's the prospect of you knowing system design and how you can grow in your career with the help of system design? So we are going to discuss all about that, how your career can be uh, in line with uh, learning low level design and high level design. And we have Shikhar with us with whom we'll be discussing about high level design. I'll be walking you through uh, low level design. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, thank you, Arsh, for such a wonderful introduction. So uh, before we begin, I would like to remind you all to take full advantage of this interactive webinar and feel free to ask questions in the chat and our speakers will address them during the Q&A sessions at the end. So let's make this experience as enriching and engaging as possible. So let's start with unveiling low level design with Arsh Goyal. So yeah, Arsh, the stage is all yours. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sanadi. Thank you, Shikhar. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, when when I say low level design, right? So I was to present a presentation, but due to some technical reasons, I'm not able to present that presentation. But generally, when we say low level design, generally as a fresher, the major thing that we focus upon is problem solving. And problem solving is very, very important from the point of view of how we enter companies, right? Most of the companies have their interview rounds, which are based upon problem solving. So our major focus is all around learning data structure algorithms or getting to clear those interview rounds. But as we... Uh, get into a company right there the things are a little different we generally don't uh, 
do exact data structure algorithm problem, but yes, some use case of the data structures in a large system or something that we might uh, come across. So the concepts of uh, low level design or concepts of object oriented design that you might have studied in your computer science degree, those come into picture when you get into a company, when you see those large code bases, when you try to understand those code bases and try to debug. So then you need those uh, important topics, those important principles that you might have studied in your uh, in your college, right? So there's a there's a uh, thing called as system design, which we have divided into two parts. One is low level design, and one is uh, high level design. That is HLD for uh, junior level roles. Let's say if somebody is uh, somebody wants to get into uh, a company, he is there for let's say zero to two years or three years of experience. For that, like he is an individual contributor. He gets to know about how systems are built in the company and he works upon basically a fewer uh, systems so basically the concepts that are discussed or the concepts that he might be interviewed or that he basically focuses upon are low level design concepts using object oriented systems so that he is able to approach a particular question low level design is basically how you approach something well right so in the session we'll cover uh, some of the important aspects of low level design like uh, when if somebody wants to start learning low level design from the scratch what all things he needs to do what are some of the important topics from the point of view of low level, low level design? We'll also discuss uh, some, uh, like when, when it comes to interviews, right? How you should answer a particular question of low level design and what is majorly focused in low level design. We'll, we'll maybe discuss some of the very common examples, some standard examples that generally are asked uh, when, when, we, when it comes to low level design, right? So we'll talk about low level design. We'll talk about object oriented programming, maybe a little bit about UML diagrams, design patterns, design principles, you for example. So these are what uh, concepts Institutes are uh, low level design. Generally, if we talk about importance, why it is important? Uh, it, is it important for front end? This is also a very common question. Is it important for front end engineers? Or is it important for back end engineers? Or everybody needs uh, system design? So, it's, the general answer is everyone uh, hopefully needs system design at some point of time. Generally, people link it more to back end engineering. Like, if somebody is into back end engineering, so he should have good knowledge of uh, system design. Front end engineers don't uh, need. Uh, system design to a large extent, but that is kind of wrong. Like if a front end engineer wants to interact with a back end engineer or a full stack engineer, so he can communicate well only if he has that knowledge, right? So a good level of knowledge of system design is required for both front end engineers as well as for back end engineers, so that you can have an in and out of uh, how to take things forward in a company, right? So when I talk about freshers, so understanding how system design works for zero to two years of experience, front end or a full stack engineer also, it helps him collaborate, it helps him uh, in understanding a particular product end to end, uh, how a device, let's say you want to get in data from a UI, right? Let's say you are getting in data from a UI, how that data is stored, right? So it's somewhere like both of them are interrelated and you need to have a clear understanding of both of them. You also come across a lot of uh, uh, issues when, when you're solving different uh, problems and you're uh, working in production, right? So there's the, you need to troubleshoot or you need to debug a lot of issues. So if you have good understanding of those principles of basic uh, fundamentals of low level design, you are having an edge over others when it comes to learning and troubleshooting and debugging those issues. Also the more, like one of the most important concept, like let's say if you want to prosper in your career, if you want to grow in your career, going forward, data structural algorithms will be there. Yes, you should have good problem solving skills, but apart from data structural algorithms, this uh, separate round of system design or separate round of low level design might be there in most of the companies. Like now, if I talk about from the point of view of freshers, there are some specific companies in which you will find a low level design round for their hiring process. If you talk about Intuit, right? So there's a separate uh, low level design round in which they'll ask you a very simple problem. That's not actually low level design, but uh, testing your concepts of object oriented programming. If you're good at object oriented programming, you'll be able to ace that particular round. So starting with like, let's say if you want to understand the, what are the prerequisites, right? If I talk about what are the prerequisites of uh, object oriented programming, so you should be comfortable with one basic, uh, like basic coding. When I say basic coding, you should be comfortable with loops. You should be comfortable with iterators, conditional statements, and all that, that we generally study in the first year of college. So you should be aware of those. Then we move on to one object oriented programming language. Now, which are, which all object oriented programming languages are there? There is like multiple object oriented programming languages are there. Generally, uh, the C++, Java, and Python we study for. And uh, concepts of object oriented programming can be applied to all of these languages. When I say object oriented programming, so we traditionally move from uh, 
procedural programming to object oriented programming and we introduce some certain concepts let's say we introduce a concept of classes we introduce a concept of objects that helps us uh, reuse our code and make it more clear to understand like if there's a large system that we need to develop or if there's a large code base that we need to make or there's a large system that we are working upon so in that case we won't be able to specifically identify or specifically figure out some of the things and there'll be a lot of code that can be reused again and again right so solving that use case we come up with the concept of object oriented programming there are multiple other use cases as well so there are uh, uh, four to five principles of object oriented programming that play a very important role when we, when we say there's something known as encapsulation what is encapsulation you combine data members you combine member functions and you uh, form a whole bucket of a class in which you arrange things in a better way right then there's something known as abstraction let's say you are creating a password and you don't don't want somebody to access it from outside so abstraction may you have uh, something known as access specifiers that is some keywords particular keywords known as private known as public known as uh, protected they have certain properties let's say if you want to uh, stop the access from somebody or within the class or outside the class so there's some some scope of that as well so introducing that is something known as abstraction then there's a concept of inheritance let's say if there's a parent class which has already implemented some of the functions and i want to create a child class let's say there's a parent class vehicle which has some of the basic properties of a vehicle and then i create a separate class known as car or then i create a separate class known as a, a bike right so there would be some features that would be common in car bike and vehicle right so we can inherit those uh, methods those functions from our parent class that is vehicle so this is the concept of inheritance in which we are not using code again and again but reusing the same code again there are multiple different levels of like different types of inheritance multi level inheritance multiple inheritance you will study about them when you go through these concepts so these are some of the very very basic concepts of oops that at least like every cs engineer if he is there he should know Uh, then there's something known as polymorphism. When I talk about interviews, this is a very very important topic. Uh, in polymorphism, also there are different types: runtime polymorphism. There's something known as compile time polymorphism. Also, we categorize it into function overloading, function overriding. So these are some virtual pointers. So these are some of the concepts that are highly uh, asked in your interviews, right? Next, coming on to like once you are good with object oriented programming, then there's something known as design principles. Uh, generally, like the very basic design principles. Also, there's something known as grasp. There's something known as dry. But there's one uh, design principle that is generally asked in interviews. That is solid principles, right? When I say solid principles, so S O L I D. So each of them has their own significance. When you say S, it stands for single responsibility principle. O, it stands for open close principle. L, it stands for Liskov substitution principle. I, it stands for interface segregation principle. And D, it stands for dependency inversion principle. So these solid principles, these can be asked to you in the interviews directly. Also, what does S in solid principle signify? And like, tell me where you have used this in past, in which project or which like when you are coding, how you use this S. principle and you need to explain that so you need to be very very good at these uh, solid principles also moving upon from solid principles there's something known as design patterns particularly so multiple design patterns are there in uh, market these like what type of questions can be asked from design pattern like first of all what are these design patterns you need to know the code of certain standard design patterns how to use those design patterns in real life and how have you used it in your real life some of the common design patterns if i talk about uh, are singleton pattern factory pattern abstract factory pattern builder pattern adapter pattern so these are very very common standard problems getting to know these and understanding them you will have a gist of how exactly a design pattern is and how i can exactly use this particular design pattern and solve a problem so that's the crux so it's not that you will get it easily it's like you need to understand it you need to see some examples how they are implemented then you can finally try implementing those in your use cases so when wherever you go and read about a uh, design patterns right you will find these 5 7 uh, very very important design patterns and these will form your fundamental these will form your base once you're done with all this right then there are some specific problems the type of problems that might be asked to you in your interview for low level design when i am talking from the point of view of freshers right so there are some standard problems let's say some common examples of how to design an elevator how to design a parking lot how to design a ticket booking system similar to what a book my show does right a book management system or a library management system atm machine so these are some of the very very common uh, 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 dis- system design questions that are asked in the interviews generally for freshers 
so how to solve this problem is basically you need to understand like let's say there's a problem so this problem would have which all members what all i need to know to solve an elevator problem which all functions or which all methods will it have how to integrate those methods how one method is dependent upon another how they both how these both methods are interacting right so this is the kind of uh, these are the kind of some of the examples that you need to know now coming on to a very important topic how to approach such a problem in an interview let's say if you come across a system design problem or a low level design problem what should be your approach so the first thing in any system design round it's it's not a kind of an interview you can say it's majorly a discussion right so interview like system low level design questions are majorly a discussion in which you uh, ask interviewer interviews ask you something and you both have a, a healthy conversation on something so whenever you are bombarded with an interview uh, question on low level design the first thing that you should keep in mind is you should clarify all your doubts right you should not assume anything on your own this is the first rule of uh, uh, when you come across uh, to any system design or low level design interview clarifying the system requirements that is very important don't assume something then you need to specifically define ki these are the classes these are the attributes that i'll be using to solve this problem and have a consensus with the interviewer ki yes we both are on the same lines if there's something in his mind make sure you try to in, uh, inculcate in that then define those methods how those methods can be done then uh, show different class relationships there are certain types of diagrams that we use they are known as uml diagrams activity diagram or class diagram so certain di diagrams are there through which you will be able to represent these systems and explain it well to the interviewer once that diagram is there then it's easy for us to write code seeing that diagram so you need to understand those diagrams as well uh, so the majorly this is the process it's more about a discussion rather than an interview coming upon to how to practice right if you are a fresher and you're looking out to practice system design so first of all first thing is uh, once you are done with all this fundamentals uh, understanding design patterns some common standard problems go like what i followed or what i have seen when i was uh, studying was go and read interview experiences there are a lot of interview experiences available on geeks for geeks also in which you will find people telling you about like this particular design question was asked by, uh, by this particular company let's say uber asked this particular problem now you will have that picture in mind like this can be the question that can be asked in an interview think from the point of view of how you are answering in an interview so go through those interview experiences once you solve once you try to read those interview experiences and solve on your own you will gain more confidence and that is required second thing that you can do is watch mock interviews let's say if you come across any mock interviews you will get to know how to answer a problem because knowing things is one thing but how to answer in an interview is another thing system design problems are all about how you uh, uh, display your approach like how you tell your approach so that is this also very very important third thing is like you need to be fundamentally very very strong on all these concepts then only you will be able to prosper uh, for these uh, system design rounds also i would uh, like to show you uh, one of the courses that geeks so geeks uh, is coming up and uh, i am one of the mentors where i have taught low level design particularly some concepts of low level design are covered by me so i'll try to present my screen and uh, i hope it will be visible just a minute so this is the course this is mastering system design from low level to high level uh, solution so this is suitable for everyone who is a beginner who is in an intermediate zone and who wants to learn more about system design and who wants to grow in his career so this is the course you can go and check out different different uh, topics that have been covered there's a comprehensive coverage of 10 hours of low level design plus high level design concepts that includes oops design patterns db management scaling caching all these concepts both low level design as well as high level design you will find some live classes and interaction with uh, mentors and students there are some real world case studies that will help you understand how to approach a particular problem you will find design problems also you'll uh, get an industry recognized certification once you're done with the pro uh, with the a course once you are done with a certain percentage completion percentage of the course you will get a validation certificate that you have done this and there is a placement assistance program as well in which you can help get to your uh, get some interviews if you have uh, performed 
good in this course right so what you will learn in this particular course is you can go through the course content basics of low level design understanding constructors uml diagrams uh, core design principles lld use cases a uh, case studies particularly that i was talking about the like care it is movie ticket book, uh, booking system and airline booking system more case studies will be covered in live classes so that you can uh, ask your questions live and you can uh, get them clarified on the spot then high level design basics uh, you you have uh, system design components uh, dns load balancer scaling database architecture so all of these topics you can check out here design problems and design uh, system design framework as well so this has been taken up by me and jay chakra you can check profiles as well the course is starting very very soon the link to the course is there in the description you can check and a special class is happening this weekend the link for which you can find it out in the comments it's a zoom uh, link and uh, you will be able to uh, register for the same you can check out the link in the description it would take you to a zoom page where you need to fill in your details it's a completely free webinar where you will be getting to understand more about how to design systems like i would say an extended version of what i have taught right so yeah make sure you do check that out so over to over to you suniti Uh, uh thank you so much arsh for providing such a valuable insights it was uh, indeed a great session uh, so now i would uh, like shikhar sir to uh, take us forward with unveiling the high system design so over to you sir for high level design um thanks niti uh first of all thanks arsh for for explaining it in so much detail arsh has explained every aspect of how low level design works and what is it that it is applicable on right <clears throat> so regarding high level design it is generally not something which is asked for someone who is very fresher or new in the in the job field so essentially it is more focused towards an experienced professional wherein you'll see that how the systems are interacting with each other so in any application you'll see that there are different components of an application let's say if i really talk about whatsapp right so essentially if you are typing a message that's a different kind of a use case and if the notification for receiving that message is there so that's a different use case in itself so these are the these are the things which are interacting with each other and in high level design you look at how different services are interacting with each other how you know different components are broken down into different parts and how they the data will flow through these things so in high level high level design generally uh, we cover about uh, what is the data flow like what are the different components how the system architecture is looking like so essentially we cover things like client server architecture how the load balancing is there so these are the concepts regarding infrastructure they are there essentially where and you will see that this here is the load balancer which will be sending out request to different services and servers and of course where is caching where is all all those concepts that you think about in terms of architecture that will be there essentially how databases are what are the indexes whichever what are the indexes that we need to add on our tables right and how the how the event based architecture is there so essentially these things which are uh, going to help you build a system from a different from a very high level use case so essentially let's say if i say that if someone opens an whatsapp it authenticates it first and see whether the user is logged in right and then it looks at whether you want to load the messages what are the history of messages that we need to load once the authentication is done so these are different things which are happening in a sequential way and these services are interacting with each other so essentially if i am going to authenticate then i am going to load the messages for that particular user so that request goes in towards the loading of messages then of course when you load a particular chat right then you look at what the user is there and when i type in a message it sends it to the user so it it again calls out a different uh, service which is going to store the message and that is going to trigger a notification to the person which i am sending the request to so these are the things which are you know uh, looked at in terms of a high level design where how the services will interact with each other whether it is an event based system or it is something which is a microservice architecture which is essentially just you know operating at its own right it's not something which is triggered by event uh, so in a when i say event it means like i typed a message and press send right so it's an event which occurred which sent out the message to the backend server and then it in turn uh, you know triggered a notification so again at a at a very large scale companies you'll find that it's a mix of both wherein you'll have the event driven microservices architecture as well so these this event which is going to trigger another service 
which is going to send the notification. So this is the way which we look at in terms of high level design and how things are going to look like in terms of data and how the user is going to interact with the services. This is how we structure it. And we also have those design patterns and you know architecture patterns wherein you, you look at how MVVM, how MVC works. So essentially it is about how you can break down the components into different modules. So what is, the, what is it that is going to interact with the database? Essentially, you don't want directly uh, someone to interact with the database because database is something which is very, you know, in terms of scale, when you look at from a large uh, number of people coming in, database is something which doesn't scale that quickly, right? You can have a lot of uh, system servers where they'll spawn very quickly and the code is going to execute a lot of processes, right? But when you're looking at from a database, it's a very transactional in nature. So you don't directly want people to actually go ahead and interact with the database. So you'll have different layers before that. So essentially there'll be a controller, there'll be views, there'll be uh, services which are going to just, um, the code which is going to essentially execute at the client's level. And then it in turn, will, uh, in, in some cases, get the data from cache, get the data from the database and all those things are going to be there. So essentially you identify what are the bo bottlenecks in, in your system and you identify those bottlenecks and you try to mitigate those things in terms of scale, essentially, if I talk about scale. So these are the things that you uh, learn in, in general in high level design, how you can make a scalable system, how you can make an extensible system, right? So when I said that there are solid design principles, so essentially it is also something which is followed in general in high level design also, right? Wherein you'll have database or, or the system architecture will be like, you can extend those services, but you don't really modify the base service. So uh, for example, let's say if I look at uh, YouTube comments, right? So there are comments in the in the YouTube video after the video is done. Then there is live chat as well in a live stream. And then essentially there's also once, you know, there are some cases where YouTubers just feature their uh, video at a particular time and you can interact on that video uh, stream as well which is again a live chat. So essentially these are the similar components which are being used in as a form of a comment, but you don't really need to actually build out again and again. You can reuse a lot of these things in the different parts. So if you look at from the Geeks for Geeks application perspective also, you'll have comments on articles, you'll have comments on videos as well. So we don't really redo the code or redo the system architecture at its end. We just create the interface in such a way that it uh, essentially interacts with the application or the services and it's just being reused essentially. So you don't really want to actually redo the code and redo the services because if you, in future also, if you want to actually change something, you don't want the change to be done at multiple levels. You essentially want change to be one, to be done at one level and it is essentially just uh, very easy to make these changes. So it's again, very, very well modularized and it really uh, just makes your system future proof as well. So let's say if I uh, if I just want to add a double tap to like functionality on, on any comment, right? So I just have to make change at one level uh, in terms of backend or if, if it is being done in general on, on a code level. So you want to have that functionality on the very atomic level. You don't really want it to be done at multiple levels. Of, like uh, if I'm adding it on the, on the comment on the uh, video, I can double tap and like the video comment, but I can also double tap and like the article comment. So essentially it's really about reusability, how you can uh, redo those changes. And like I said, it's about modularizing the application. So let's say you'll know what the input is going to be and you'll know what the output is going to be. So essentially I can really change whatever the application is doing at that module level and really not affect the rest of the code, right? So that's how we actually um, divide the code and that's what is happening at the at that module level is covered in low level design. So essentially you'll modularize the code, you'll identify whichever way the data is going to grow from and which what all the aspects of things are, which is going to create a bottleneck in your uh, system architecture. So essentially when we talk about scale, it really again is very subjective. So I can create an application which will work for 100 people. It can work for 1000 people. It can work for a million people as well. And again, so these are the things that we actually look at when we talk about scale, we also talk about the level at which we want to do. So, and all those things, like when you add scale, when you go to a higher level, you actually want to do some sort of, uh, you know, you, there's cost involved, of course, with everything, right? So when, you, when you're when you going to 
scale it to a very large level, the cost will grow up. So essentially, you do some trade-offs wherein you'll have some sort of, uh, you know, trade-offs in terms of performance or, you know, maintainability or uh, simply just the latency that is going to add in, in terms of uh, a system design. So let's say, for example, let's say you purchase something on any application, right? And you get an invoice for it. So it's not something that you need in real time. It can come in a minute late as well. That's going to still work fine for us. But you can also create it in real time. So essentially, this is where you, you identify what is it that is going to not create a lot of problem if it is uh, it, there is some latency in it. But, but some things are uh, in terms of application, you will want that real time, let's say. So I want the access to that product. Let's say if I purchase the digital product, I want access to it immediately. So that's something which is you will want to do it very quickly. So that's that is where you will uh, put the best of your resources. And in the in terms of sending out an invoice, it's something which can be handled on a later level. So you'll design the architecture in such a way that it's not really affecting a lot of things in general in terms of scalability or performance. So I don't want most of our resources working all the time directly, you know, just pooling in what other purchases coming in. So this is how we um, just look at in terms of system architecture and how we design the systems. So this is uh, these are the basic things which are covered in general in high level design. And of course, as in these are this in, in high level design, generally we look at how the system architecture is look like, what are the different, you know, use cases and what are the different diagrams that the data will flow like. So this is, this is generally about those things. And like Arsh mentioned, it is about um, more when you grow in a company, let's say four or five years. So this is something which is expected of you to know, wherein when you have worked a lot on a, on a lot of applications and on a scale, then you are something. You are someone who's aware of how the data is going to look like. It's not really much about how you will implement those modules. Which again, it's that that is something which is also covered in different you know companies. So when they look at high level design interview, they generally don't really ask you how you have structured your code or how you have uh, implemented at the module level. But it is about how you will design a application from a high level design perspective. So this is uh, generally what is uh, covered in high level design. Um, I guess over to you, Suniti and Ash. All right. So uh, thank you, sir, for uh, imparting such valuable knowledge to all of us. Uh, so now we would like to see you and Ash to engage in a conversation around the importance of complete system design. Thank you so much, Saniti. Thank you so much, Shekhar. It was really insightful. Like I got to understand a lot of things related to high level design when it comes to growing in a company. And the examples that you shared uh, were, were really insightful. Uh, just uh, like when it comes to system design, right? There are a lot of questions that uh, comes into students' minds generally because this is not something that is highlighted or this is not something that is a part of the curriculum. So they're not very sure whether to do this, whether not to do this, which companies would be asking how it would work. So we'll, we'll have some of those doubts, some of those queries, like generally people have and how, what's exactly the importance of system design or low level design when it comes to uh, people interviewing, right? So first thing is, let's say you have been working at Geeks for Geeks for so long and like uh, you have, you might have interviewed a lot of people, right? For recruiting in the teams. So generally, when when you, when you talk about with respect to system design, so what exactly do you look for in the candidates uh, when it comes to system design, whether it is low level or whether it is high level design? So I generally want to understand if they have their basics right, right? So when you talk about object oriented programming, are they aware mm -hmm. of how the what the concepts are and how am I going to implement it? It's not something which is you know you need to just memorize it and just repeat it at at the level. So if you are able to you know, mention like there is a code and you can tell me that this is the actual concept which is being implemented and why do we do it? Mm -hmm. Because uh, mm -hmm. when you look at it from a, let's say inheritance, right? So inheritance, you will want to, why do we want to implement inheritance? What is the use case that we want to implement it at? And this is something which, you know, a lot of people who are very good at uh, these concepts, they are aware of how things work. So it's mm -hmm. not something you can memorize and just repeat it in an interview. Once you have worked on it, it is something which is very clearly visible to an yeah. interviewer, right? So the concepts like uh, caching, what is it and how do we implement it? Where is it that we should do? 
what is load balancing all those things when you have worked on these things that is uh, quite clearly you know known to the interviewer that you can actually you know the basics of those things are aware you are aware of so these are the things that we generally look at yeah yeah generally like rather than theoretical it's more about how you can actually apply it in a smaller problem and break down the problem and show it to the interviewer like exactly what do you know right, so that's right. what did you do actually yeah 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 so it's basically like when i talk about fresher interviews right so in fresher interviews they might ask you what is runtime polymorphism right you need to tell them what is runtime polymorphism then the next question would definitely be like you need to give an example and explain it right so when mm-hmm. you give an example it automatically shows how good you are with your concepts learning right. that theoretical definition is one thing but understanding concepts is very very important true to the core like in most of the interviews this is uh, what i have also seen like i have given multiple interviews for multiple companies so nowadays uh, interviewers are more keen towards asking system design problems because this is something that you can't cram right? it's not about right. cramming it's about how creative you are at your approach you basically need to impress the interviewer and being it's not about this like even if this a predefined rule like this question is to be solved by this way but mm-hmm. in system design you can have your own approach yeah. right for sure you have your so own thinking just about, yeah so it all depends upon how well you are able to impress the interviewer that makes the difference mm-hmm. right so yeah definitely uh, uh, i was also curious about you uh, working at geeks for geeks right so let's say a kind of a blog website you started the blog website at gfg now you have multiple different components multiple different things on gfg so if like you have the first hand experience of working upon the same so how can if somebody wants to understand a system like gfg right so what all things he needs to know or how can somebody understand it so essentially from any applications perspective right so you'll have to have that understanding of how the users are going to interact with it yeah. what is the scale at which they are going to work on and how the data will look like going back to them so essentially it's just a client server right when people request mm-hmm. something from the web server and they get the response in general so this is the very simplest version of looking at a website like a blog website or any other application in general mm-hmm. so when you want to understand those concepts you will want to understand the bottlenecks of it right let's mm-hmm. say if i'm just assume that we have just one server and uh, it is serving to one person so it is going to just send a request and get back the request and it will work fine for that person very easily it's not going to cause any mm-hmm. trouble for you right and then when you look at it when you look at it from a scale let's say we increase 100% it will still work one server very small server it can still work but when you mm-hmm. go to 100000 people then it will start causing problems right you'll yeah. probably have to have the bigger server which is what we call it as a vertical scaling right wherein mm-hmm. you'll have a very big server which is again able to serve for 100000 users let's assume that works then when you look at when you mm-hmm. again increase the scale right when it goes to 100000 to let's say 500000 then it mm-hmm. again it is going to cause a lot of problems and uh, this is again uh, a issue that you can understand when you Uh, work on that application right and when you look at it so in that case you'll need to have similar servers of 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 those size uh, to see, let's assume two servers are able to work for it so this is what we call horizontally scaling the system wherein there'll be a load balancer and it'll be balancing mm-hmm. out the request between those two servers so this is generally mm-hmm. the concept when you look at it from a scales perspective and then you'll try to see that okay this is not going to work now we need to do something about it and then you implement caching load balancing sharding database indexing all those things they come into picture once you have that application so it really is about understanding the application and understanding the scale at which it is going to operate on understood understood that's that's very very true like uh, gfg i think it serves to a lot of people right the scale would be immense so managing that and uh, managing a team who is understanding that like generally when let's say somebody who is very new to uh, the system or very new to system design he he joins you or he joins any company right what do you see like what are the challenges he face like what is the problem because in college we don't study system design exactly but once we are into company we need to understand those concepts so what are the challenges that somebody faces when he or she gets into a company and how he can rectify or how maybe he can cover up that gap between college to uh, a company when he starts learning so all i feel that all they need is curiosity 
right so when mm. you join a company they have their system architectures they have their people who are working mm. on those applications already so they have people who have the understanding but when you are someone who's really joining in new you will want to understand the, that you will see that design you the, you'll see that mm -hmm. system architecture and you'll want to understand okay how is this the data is going there and then process and then the process data is going to a different uh, service let's say so you'll have to have that understanding of how these concepts so when i say load balancer and all those things these are some things that i learned when i joined geeks geeks and you know over the period of time i just understood okay this is how load balancers work how caches work how these things work right so you'll get a lot of jargons and you'll want to understand okay what is it i just need to really understand how this works and why is it that it is implemented here so you'll mm. want to have a discussion with your seniors also like how is it that we are doing it in this application and what is it that we can we could have done better or probably we could have mm. done it in a different way and what would have been the problem if we had not done it this way so these are things that mm. you actually when you are joining in you'll want to have that understanding so i would say curiosity is something that you'll want to have and really be mm. uh, looking to learn those things uh, i would add to uh, like curiosity is i would add something to curiosity that is strong fundamentals and curiosity right. if you can say like right, strong right. fundamentals are very important i'm not saying with respect to system design but in general if in he general. has good fundamentals of coding you know he needs like he writes quality code so this is also very important aspects when it comes to object oriented design or role oriented design so if his or her fundamentals are strong and he can have those healthy discussions with the manager with his teammates with his mentors yeah. that's the best way somebody learns right it's not yeah. about uh, going from uh, somewhere reading reading some from somewhere reading a blog or something you will get an understanding but the real understanding or concepts are into your head when you are interacting with somebody who has let's say 10 years of experience who has 5 uh, 15 years of experience so that person throughout his life has worked upon so many systems right so the kind of experience that he has or the kind of bug that he can resolve so that is something uh, you uh, appreciate it generally yeah. let's say if, if somebody is working in a company right so when you join as a fresher you might need a lot of time to get onto a single point or solve a single bug to debug something but let's say if you come across if you ask somebody with a 10 years of experience or 15 years of experience that person would be like very quickly he can tell you like this can be the problem or this can be the problem so you need to troubleshoot between those two problems and you will be finally uh, uh, finally there with the solution so like it comes with experience this is what we can say more of experience but yes keeping our fundamentals strong and more curiosity to learn is the key behind yeah. the same yeah you can ask the some question only if you know the basics of things right so that's yeah, very yeah. True. you need to have that basic very, understanding very true very true uh, also let's say if somebody is not getting that environment he is in some company he is not getting that environment where he is able to understand those concept he is like let's say in many of the service based companies generally people are there on bench right they're not doing mm -hmm. something productive and they're not able to learn things but their experience is increasing at certain point of time so if some like if there's a person who wants to understand or learn let's say high level design so how somebody can learn it on their own or are some of the ways if somebody wants to learn it on their own what how can we do that so that's a very difficult thing to do because <laughs> when you look at high level design you would want scale and yeah, totally. i could have said in terms of low level design that you could actually build projects and you know structure your code and you can actually go ahead and uh, see things working but in yeah. terms of high level design you will have to have that scale so probably i believe mm -hmm. uh, you can have those testing general load testing done when you build a project mm -hmm. you build some application at your end and you really send that uh, load through through some tools through some way wherein it is going to test out your system and it is going to you know you'll identify what are the bottlenecks at times you'll find that the servers are not responding well at times you'll see that the database is not uh, doing that yeah. well the systems are not scaling and then you'll implement different levels of uh, optimization that we look at from from the systems perspective so i believe again building a project but again you need to have that uh, load tested as well wherein your system is working mm -hmm. fine or not and you obviously try to understand the concepts of how these things will uh, can help so these are generally tools right wherein you look at a load balancer yeah. it's just generally a tool for you to actually scale your systems horizontally so essentially mm -hmm. you'll send out the data and you'll uh, see that the load balancer will divide that particular number of requests into different servers 
and that mm-hmm. is something again when you'll do it you'll it's something which is again going to cost you in terms of money as well when you're yeah. doing that but uh, best way of course is doing at uh, an application level which is again a project of a company when you're learning through that application when you're working on it but in such a case wherein you're on bench which is generally the case with freshers i would say not a lot of yeah. experienced professionals mm-hmm. are with for them it's majorly yeah. low level design only yeah yeah so on in case of low level designs you can create uh, projects you can and understand object oriented programming different design principles that you mentioned these are mm-hmm. things that you can build at at your end, own end yeah but in terms of high level design you'll have to have that scale and understanding of how yeah. application true majorly like person can get through the those theoretical concepts but actually won't be able to see how systems are being uh, built and how the scale is coming within a company low level design yes he can perfect like he, he will have a good understanding of basic concepts of low level design some systems he can build and he will be able to get through it uh, when when we are taking the example of geeks for geeks right so this the something known as resource utilization so how like building good systems can help us optimize resource utilization like if you have uh, seen this in geeks or geeks or if like the quality of core the quality of systems that has built has helped you reduce uh, certain resources or like reduce your expenses at some point of time how like has this happened or any example if you have this like this in mind yeah so that happens a lot wherein a good system can save you a lot of money right if you design it well you can save a lot of money because i would say that the costliest resource in terms of the system is generally the database wherein uh, you'll fe- because it gen- it doesn't scale that quickly it, it generally mm-hmm. a particular scaling concept and in some cases it can scale horizontally but essentially it's a very costly operation with, that you need to do and uh, so in that way we in, at our end as well we have a lot of places which we have implemented caching it and you want to just cache the data which is not going to change a lot and we have identified those con- those places where we can implement caching and we cache that data for a particular time and then it, it only goes to the database only when it really needs to essentially mm-hmm. that way you can save a lot of cost and you can identify those places uh, in an application you can understand how you can lo- balance the load what is the scale at which it should actually add another server right so understanding mm-hmm. of your own application is also very necessary like how much memory it is taking how much cpu it needs so these are the things that you'll once you're running an application you'll see that it it is quite visible to you and you there are different uh, tools and services which can actually showcase those uh, what is the cpu utilization what is the memory utilization <laughs> and those things when you look at it and you see that okay when a lot of people come in again you will be able to scale it or not so it has happened to us a lot like uh, i remember in a, a lot of years back when we did our first contest right it's generally something mm-hmm. which uh, i remember it was kind of a night and uh, it didn't really scale right because the application okay. wasn't able to the system wasn't able to actually uh, tolerate all that kind of load so over a period of time we have optimized that use case and i uh, i mean i can say that we have been able to actually scale those kind of contests and systems wherein we had you know amazon's hiring contest on our platform so yeah, essentially yeah, yeah. we saw a lot of people coming in in that place so and at that time we were not able to actually do it so it's something which is a growing uh, you know with the application grows you see that uh, you identify those bottlenecks you identify the areas which can be improved and that saves a lot of cost for you got it so so that's why system design skills are very very critical when it comes to hiring right yeah that was that was great talking to you shikhar i guess it was a very healthy conversation and uh, the audience might have got to understand a lot about uh, low level design as well as high level design and what all uh, uh, aspects are important from building a career from growing in their career and some important aspects of uh, lld and hld i would like to hand it over to suniti if we have any doubts any questions any queries from the audience we can we can take them up yeah sure and uh, that was indeed a very insightful conversation between you and professor so i hope audience have gained a lot of information with that conversation so now uh, let us take uh, some of the questions that we have so to start with uh, the first question that we have here is uh, which books are good to start reading high level designs so i uh, should i answer that 
yeah yeah shikar yes i generally learned all of it through different pdfs and blog posts uh, to be very honest like you'll read out about the discord blog post how they manage their system there's zero baz how they manage the system yeah there's twitter's whole case studies done so i generally read through that wherein how are they managing their systems how are they actually you know scaling what are what are the things that they are doing at their level and that's where you pick up on a lot of things and of course i mean you can find out a lot of books but i've generally done it through pdfs uh, wherein they publish their own case studies and you know research papers so that is something that i have uh, really read, read about and the general blog posts of different technical blogs or different companies they publish their blogs a lot netflix you can find out a lot of yeah. uh, on netflix technical documentation right so i generally read those things yeah the same thing like uh, it's better to go through how technology is changing right zerodas if you talk about their blogs they are very very insightful you get to learn a lot of things how they are scaling uh zerodas blogs are one of those uh, when it, when you talk about low level design also there are some books i like there's some there's, there's a book known as object oriented thought process i don't remember the author's name but that is something that can be used for uh, understanding basic concepts of low level design or basic concepts of uh, uh, object oriented design in in our college we we study from a very uh, concise book like if somebody is starting from the very zero or very scratch there's a good book by bala guru swami i don't remember the name so that's also something that can be considered if somebody wishes to start from the very scratch for a uh, low level design all right but uh, nevertheless you if you if you if you search any topic from system design or low level design high level design on google you will get gfg's link at the top and you can go and read that blog it will have a detailed explanation on every topic yeah we try our best yeah all right yeah so uh, thank you for taking up that question so uh, as the next question we have uh, in low level design uh, do we have to write code for that given situation or we make any flow chart type solution so uh, it's like both ways it is done uh, depends upon the interviewer let's say if there's an interviewer who wants you to implement a particular functionality or a particular code then you need to implement it. it's not that you need to let's say there's a big problem right you divide it into lot of methods you divide it into a uh, lot of attributes so from those methods let's say if i am the interviewer i would i might ask you to implement one of those methods right i might not ask you to implement the full code so it depend totally depends upon the interviewer some interviewers are satisfied even with the flow even with the clarity of thought if you are good clarity of thought if you can explain them the approach they are well to go but you should be prepared for writing code anyhow like if you interview for these companies you might be like when i talk about very freshers for internships or something if you come across a very simple low level design problem they won't ask you code but let's say once you grow in career you have one years or two years of experience then you may be uh, asked to write code not the entire but yes some parts some particular methods and then there'll be cross questioning on those methods uh, from the code that you have written generally this is what happens for low level design yeah i mean as the founder of linux said you know talk is cheap show me the code <laughs> true true <Yes>. true <laughs> all right uh, so okay as our next question we have uh, are there any emerging trends or technologies that are influencing the way uh, lld and hld is approached and how we developers can adapt to these trends so essentially uh, looking at the emerging technologies you'll find that again at the very lowest level it is again the same concept that are being applied so you'll probably have a different database essentially which is going which is able to tolerate a lot of load and you know it is doing it at their own uh, inside level like if you look at it some something like a mongodb atlas or something right where they are load balancing at its own level the man, there are managed services through aws or gcp wherein you'll see that it's a managed service but at the end of the day it is also again load balancing at its own level they are uh, having that kind of a load so if you really if you design a really bad system those technologies can't help you right so you have to have that kind of understanding wherein you are able to design good systems and you are able to design good applications it's basically adapting to any technology that comes into picture it's more about that yeah 
and uh, next question is basically lld oriented so uh, is it necessary to learn lld for like on campus placements that we have uh it's again a like uh question that not all companies would ask you lld that is true but you should be good at object oriented programming concepts of oops are asked by almost every company so you should be very good at these principles that i discussed right polymorphism inheritance abstraction encapsulation all these concepts are very very important concepts of runtime polymorphism compile time polymorphism virtual pointer virtual function abstract classes interfaces so these concepts are very very important from the point of view of uh, any interviews for a fresher software engineer let's say when I, when when it comes to designing a system these design patterns or design principles yes companies have started moving uh, and they have started asking these in their interviews but not all companies would ask uh, them so it, it totally depends upon which company you are interviewing for there might be some companies on campus let's say a if a company like dsho visits right so dsho has one round in which they will ask you system design problems Uh, or or let's say atlassian is there right so in atlassian also in some interviewers some interviewers might ask you uh, system design problems so it, it totally depends upon the interviewer as well as the company which you are interviewing for yes you can definitely be asked system design problems on campus as well all right uh, thank you ash for giving us this answer and now i hope our uh, viewers will try to learn this ld approach to ace in their interviews now uh, let Let me just uh, take you all through this amazing course. I'll just quickly uh, share my screen. Ash has already done that for us, but just let me do that quickly again, so that uh, all of you can just let me know. Okay, my screen is visible. All right. So uh, this is our course which we are launching. That is mastering system design from low level to uh, high level solutions, and. Uh, we are having a free demo session this saturday which uh, which you can come and you can like analyze that what session the course what we are offering and uh, the contents that we have and also you are going to uh, get a instant discount of inr 11099 rupees if you use the coupon launch offer uh, this is our offer price which we are offering because uh, it is for the first time that uh, we will be launching this course and also if you attended this saturday it is going to be absolutely free so make sure that you are attending it and a uh, certain key highlights that we have is that it is having a comprehensive coverage we will have live classes and interactions we will have real world case studies design problems and of course placement assistance program and also you are going to learn all these whole lot of things and this is the content that we have the course link is provided in the description of this video so make sure that you are accessing that and we have course instructors here none other than arsh koyal and jay chakra so all of you can see the expertise that they have in their fields so make sure that you are enrolling yourself in this course and the link has been provided so that is about the course that we have here and also i must say that uh, whether you are a seasoned professional or whether you are a budding enthusiast this course literally promises to broaden your horizons and empower you with the knowledge that you all need to succeed so uh, this is about the course now um, coming back to the session we are really privileged to have at such experts join us today thank you shikhar sir and uh, thank you arsh for helping us grasp the concept of system design effectively also uh, i would uh, like to express gratitude to all the attendees for their active participation and i would like you all to keep exploring the world of system design so uh, anything from your side shikhar sir and arsh uh, thank you so much it was lovely interacting with shikhar as well as uh, answering questions of uh, the audience it was a great experience looking forward to uh, see all of you in some other session uh, thank you so much Pleasure, pleasure talking to you, uh, Arsh as well, and Suniti, and all the people who joined in. Thank you all. Um, keep learning. Thank you. All right. So thank you, everyone. Must enroll in the course and join us on the Saturday for the amazing live session. Bye, everyone.